for you. To worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ set us free from the bondage of sins. And I'm so happy to be here to tell you about the situation of my country in both social, political, and security situation. I'm here with my entire family, my wife, Linda, and our two sons, two of our three children, Brian and Theophil. Unfortunately, Eliab cannot be with us this morning because we certainly he moved from Ohio to New Jersey for a new job. First of all, let me take in special way my long-term friend, Arkesi, who I consider to be a sort of intermediary between me and you, members of Bethlehem Lutheran Church. I'm so glad to have him with us this morning, and I would appreciate you warmly applauding him. Please. I would like also to extend my thank you to the angel of the church, Reverend Keith Whitty, to all of you, board of the church, and all the members, all the saints of that congregation, we are so pleased having you with us this morning. On behalf of my people down Haiti, the members of the Evangelical Look and Shirt of Haiti, especially the ones from Northern District, I greet you this morning. Before telling you this morning about problems and needs, let me first thank you for your generosity, which you have shown by supporting us in a very regular basis. Believe me, my friends, we are very, very grateful to you. Now let me tell you a little bit about the situation of the country. How the country is really doing. I can tell you that since the earthquake of January 12, 2010, which killed 200,000 people, the country has never get back on its feet. No real investment has been made to revive the economy. And unfortunately, the country continues its descent into hell. Adding in 2016, the Hurricane Matthew, which destroyed the entire southern region of Haiti, the bread basket of the country. In spite of their situation, we begin to feel a kind of glimmer of hope. When during that same year, in 2016, a new president has been elected, but unfortunately, he was going to be assassinated on July 7, 2020, which further complicated the already vulnerable and precarious situation of the country. Since that unfortunate event, the instability has set in, and the country is no longer governed. No elected officials in place because elections were not being organized and until now. It is exactly at this same moment that the gangs began to emerge and impose the law. As I speak to you this morning, 80% of Port-au-Prince, the capital, the capital of the country, 
where everything is concentrated is under bank control. Our police is under equipped and are unable to encounter the actions of the criminals. Kidnapping for ransom, what? Assassination are common place. In most cases, entire families are kidnapped and then killed because they can't afford to pay ransom. Others are simply missing. The luckiest one have left their houses to stay in public squares, in school, or to stay with family members in the countryside. Even though these families can't provide anything to supply their needs. There is a saying in Haiti, dirty laundry is, I'm sorry, dirty laundry is washable, is washed in family, and uh, it is in adversity once recognized to friends. It is not a matter if you can help someone, but what you can do to help someone who comes to you. Due to the situation, to the political instability, due to the situation that we face every day, Haiti has no job, Haiti has no investment, and now they consider Haiti as a state of failure. They are right because a country which cannot protect its citizens, which cannot provide medical care for its fellow citizens, which cannot adequately feed its children, has failed its duties. What the impact of the situation in everyone's life actually in Haiti. And as a church body, as a member of congregations, what we can do to help the people who are struggling, what we can do to help them so far. The cost of living is really high, is really exorbitant. Inflation is in our wallets in our table. Actually, a bag of rice of 18 kilos costs 200 US dollars. A gallon of vegetable oil costs 1,200 dollars. I'm sorry, 12 dollars. <laughs> A bag of beans, 250 dollars. A gallon of fuel of diesel costs 10 US dollars. Who can afford this situation? That's the question. Now, let's have a look at on how the country, how what the situation of the country, how its impact, how it affects our ministry. If in Port-au-Prince and in some other regions of the country, nothing is moving forward in good direction, at least we in the northern district, in the north of Haiti, give thanks to God that all activities work as best as they can. As I previously mentioned, the fact that Everything is concentrated in port au the capital of the country. The situation there deeply affects the whole country. Our ministry in north of Haiti is not spared. Because many parents whose children attend our school are members of our congregation and are unemployed. Most of them are members of our congregation. They do not have a job, and 
in our school, many of the children belong to the parents attend our school. If we do not receive those kids who live in the neighborhood and members are mem uh, members of our congregation, if we do not receive them, if we do not accept them in our schools, that means they would never attend school in their life. My friends, let me tell you, the situation is little. And at the same time, even though we are telling you the situation as it is, as it's so tough, but we are we will take for it to that for every single blessing that he has shared upon us. Maybe someone can ask why you have schools if parents can pay tuition. And I would understand if we have school and we have many parents in the community, we have many children in the neighborhood, why you accept them in our schools if they can't even afford tuition? The answer is so simple. We don't have school just to make money, but our schools who, that belong to our churches are means of evangelism. Through our school, to the children who go to our school, who have means to reach further and bring them to Jesus. You can see here that children in class and uh, those kids who are in class, those kids who come to our school, as I said, you, I told you, most of them would never, would never go to school. Because public school in Haiti is uh, really in bad shape. When our children are in class, you see the kids who go to public school, they go to this school. Why? Because teachers in public school are not paying. The state of Haiti, they really don't care about paying teachers. So if you have your children and you send them, you send them to a public school, it is almost like that they never go to school. That the reason why we have so many kids in our school at Mandy. Every Thursday, we have, every Thursday in every week, we have devotion at the church for kids and teachers. Each child has to attend at least worship service once a month. In our curriculum of the school, we teach them the catechism, and it is one of the best ways to let them know about Jesus. The question is, if parents can afford to pay tuition, how the school itself, how we as pastors, as responsible, what we do to pay our teachers? If the situation is so hard, but we think that we must do something and we do something. For this purpose, we have some projects that we have to share with our partners, with our friends overseas. In the as I said, and in the region of the country, nothing is moving. I said, we in the North District, we give glory to God because all activities were at the best. In the Northern District, we have a total of eight, I'm sorry, of ten churches and eight schools. We have also ten other pastors for a total of 2,500 registered members. 
all those schools, in all those schools, we have a total of 200, I'm sorry, 200, uh, 2,300 students. In our main school at Madrid, we have a total of 650 kids attending our school from Monday through Friday, from kindergarten to 11 graders. Three years ago, we had only nine graders as the higher grade. Since every year, we are adding one more grader. We have a number of 75 teachers, a number of 35 uh, staff members, a, a monthly salary of 12,850 American dollars. Where we get the money to pay our pastors, to pay the teacher's salary. That's the reason why we try our best so that we can have something in the district that can generate income. We are so thankful to our friends. We are so thankful to our partners in the US. You are, we are so thankful to you, my dear fellow members, my dear friends, the saint of Bethlehem, Lutheran Church, for supporting us for long and every year. You have sent something to Haiti. But we understand at the same time we can't handle person depend on what our friends, what our supporters, what our partners are sending to us in Haiti. That the reason why, actually, we have a bakery that generates income. And not only what we receive from you, as I told you, for a monthly salary of $12,850, we don't receive all that money from that day. We have other partners at and the church, Holy Cross, that help us. But when we put what we receive from you, we add it to what we receive from uh, Holy Cross, it doesn't make the total amount. So we understand that from our own, we need to do something to help our pastors, to help our teachers. We are so thankful that our school at Marco has the reputation as one of the best schools in that community. And to do so, we need to hire qualified teachers. To hire qualified teachers, you need to have a way to pay them. Actually, we are behind one month. And so far, we give thanks to God because years ago, it used to be worse. We used to be behind uh, for two months, for three months, but actually, we are behind of oh, just one month. So we don't actually pay teachers for the month of June. And they are waiting for us. And school is soon. School will start by September. It is a tough situation. If school is going to uh, open the doors and you are behind for the school that will end it, that's one of the challenges we have this year. To meet our needs, as I said, I do not know why. Okay? We have some small budget, and one of, we have two, and I'm going to share with you. I can tell you, when I share a project with you, my friends, I don't bear in mind that quickly you are going to do something quickly, or you have something available and possible now 
share some needs with you, and you are going to do something like But at least you can pray, and anything you can do will be welcome. We have a project, uh, a water purification project. So that project uh, is about 90% completely finished. And this project uh, being sponsored by uh, Wyo Redeemer was helping us to find some partners to, to help. They help with the building and as well they help with the equipment. Now we prepare the report and send the report to them. And now we are waiting for the last part of the money to completely finish the building. The building, I'm sorry, the building is finished, but equipments are not yet finished. What the purpose of that project? Not only to provide good and purified water to the community, to the people we are serving, but also to generate income for our church so that we might be able to continue to help our pastor. What we need for that project, one of the urgent need for that project is a uh, what we call a delivery tank for that one who have the water, the purified water, and we go out and sell the water. That's one of the needs we actually have. To buy um, a delivery tank truck that will cost fifty thousand and five hundred US dollars. The truck by itself costs about thirty seven. They bought the, the, the tent and to have insurance that what will cover the cost for the truck. <coughs> when we have set a project, we might be able to generate really good income. But one of the toughest situations is the cost of fuel. You imagine that to run a generator all day or night with diesel, you need a lot of fuel. And as I said, a gallon of fuel costs well, I'm sorry, 10 US dollars. You may be able to generate income, but all your income will be spent on purchasing fuel. For that reason, we have in mind also to have a budget, what we call a solar system to empowering the company so that we depend less on gas, on fuel. But that budget is very important, is very important and will significantly reduce our expenses in fuel which will represent 40% of the income we will generate in the company. But that project is a little high. When I ask the technician to work and to prepare for me that project, and I show, I show why in that project, he told me, why? It's so high. <laughs> yes, it is high, because we will need batteries, Inverter and so on, that will cost 89,320 US dollars. A truck which cost is 53,500, uh, 53, and that solar system project that will cost 89. And 20 US All those big, what I, according to our facility, I consider that those, those two projects 
I will be. I will be. And to be frank with you, I don't have in mind that a church by itself or one person can meet those needs. But I think together we can go on this. And once again, I feel really happy to share those needs with you, to tell you about the situation down here. We pray that and we think that the situation must change and it will change. We actually have uh, uh, the Kenyan officer, police officers in Haiti. They are trying to do the best they can to help, but until now the situation is not stable. But we believe, we deeply believe that God has a plan and he will do something in due time for our commission. Once again, thank you very so much, my friends for being our supporters for many and many years. We pray that God, in his mercy, continue to bless you. They are blessing for those who help. And especially, when you help, those are in need. When you help that ministry, it is like a seed you plant. It will grow, and in due time, you will receive the reward. Thank you so much. Any question? But I stop here for you. Thank you. I want to clarify one thing when you talked about salaries for teachers. You said $12,000 a month. That's not per teacher. No, no. That's for all of them. <laughs> yeah. And, wow. I just want to make sure everybody got that. So oh, wow. That's right here. You might say it's $12,000 a month. That's not a bad salary. But that's not. That's divided up with the salary. Yeah. 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 And we have 75. 75. Figure it out. 75 teachers across uh, 10 other classrooms. Uh, when we have the money, it's not just to be used for teachers' salaries, but also for pastors and for the staff. The number of people keep asking me, what happened to the chicken project? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Business, uh, yeah. Business in the chicken farm was a little bit, uh, is a little bit slow now, because what happened? And uh, in Haiti, everything we need, we need to order from the DR. And actually, the Dominican Republic. And actually, the border is not open to Asian people. So we can't go to the, the Dominican Republic and uh, have the business to buy from them. Yeah, but it's still there. So it's still going. It's exactly, but it's, it's slow down for a while, for the start. Just yes, because the situation, the, the warm situation between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the political environment, are religious leaders in the, in the country targets of, of violence? Or, I mean, for you personally? or religious leaders in general, you know, all the... Uh, you know, everyone need to be careful. Okay. <laughs> need to be careful because okay. I have my brother uh, who is two years older than me uh, serving a large congregation in port au -Prince. We give thanks to God that no members of our congregation being killed or kidnapped. But sometimes he can't go to, to church. Because from his house to the church, you know, uh, sometimes uh, the, the violent, violence is really tough. So it's a matter of to watch over yourself so that you do not get the kid. But they are not really target uh, you 
because you are a pastor, because you are a priest. But you know those uh, gangs, those criminals, they have uh, no, no fee for anything. Sometimes pastors or priests being kidnapped inside, inside of the church. Yeah. Not because you are a pastor, but they are just looking for money and they kidnap anyone or anything. They feel that they are not hidden so much. And as I said, um, sometimes the entire family, I remember a family, they kidnap the mom and two young girls. And then they ask for ransom that the family would never be able to pay or to it. They call uh, on the phone and ask to send the money. And because the time they give the, the parents to send the money was over, they killed them. They killed them. So that the situation. Uh, sometimes we are facing, but it is general situation in port au uh, As I said, 80% of port au the capital of the country, you know, is now <coughs> under bank control. We hope that's will not last for long. And those of you, and some of you will remember this, but uh, those of you might not, Carpathian is the second largest city. And it's how many miles from uh, France? It's 300. Yeah. Is it 300 miles? Yeah, yeah. So they're in the north part of the country. The port of France is 300 miles away. And it was, uh, you know, it was only, so you get refugees fleeing from down there, and of course, uh -huh. coming to places yeah. like Capetian, which makes it harder for everybody else. Kind of like we hear about the Middle East right now, right? Like refugees moving from one place to another. Local refugees. <laughs> Well, that's similar things happen there now. The Capetian. Tell me, what's the population? It's pretty large. Ah, uh, it's almost one million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that gives wow. idea. Yeah. This is not a little town. The Port of Prince's population. Uh, the largest population. Right, but do you know what it is? Two, two million. Two million. Two million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are the two largest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two largest one is Capetian and Question. I have a question or a statement. Uh, yeah, question. Amber was down there. Oh, I don't know if you remember. Where? In the Port of Wins? No, with you. Uh, uh, your, your boy, your, your youngest, had a, either a one-year-old okay. birthday or a two-year-old birthday. Uh -huh. But I was there in 2011. And my, my question is... Um, <laughs> He's right a, over there, by the way. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> no longer one or two, eh? <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, there was a gentleman, a tall, big guy, that was a part of the orphanage. He did construction. Um, and he was guided to be in Haiti for that time frame. And eventually his family enjoyed and savored coming with him. Um, he talked about how malaria saved his life. Okay. And, um, and that whole experience. How's the orphanage doing? Uh, the orphanage is growing up because more and more kids, you know, um, are coming. Yeah. And they have no problem to receive anyone, whoever, wherever you are, wherever you come from. So they receive you. So they keep doing business. They keep <laughs> continuing to work. And this is doing this. Thank you. Now, is there just one orphanage and one there? Yeah, <coughs> the biggest one. It's that's right. Yeah. That's right on the border yeah. with the Dominican. Across the river. Very close. Very close. Right. Right. In the Dominican Republic. Other questions or comments? Those of you who are at first service already know this. We took up the door offering at the end of the first service, and we're going to do the same thing at the end of the second service to help with the expenses and getting up here and back.
So keep that in mind if you're going up to the second, second service today. No more questions? Right. Oh, okay. Leaf, just, just, Leaf has a question. Yeah. I just wanted to put some math on the teacher salary. Um, for 75 teachers, uh, $12,500 total expenses. That's looking at $160 per teacher per month, which is about 83 cents per hour. <laughs> and then try buying gas. Try buying a fuel on that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So I just want to show you uh, uh, every year to, to start the school year we have special service and to end the school year that the, 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 the end of the school year we have kids from yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, last month. We have special service for preschool and also for kids from ninth grade, as they are going to be in eleven, um, in ten grade. We have special service and uh, special event for them. Uh, those are for ninth grade. And so. I'll play the videos for the square. Every short. Okay. I guess not. Never mind on that. But show me the kids uh, in the chapel. Yeah. So what? That worship service? Uh, at the beginning of the school year. So before starting the school year, we have all parents, we have all the children coming to school and we have special service for them. We pray for them and we invite parents. Uh, you are a uh, preacher or not? You come to service and this is the reason why I told you our schools are means of evangelism so that we let people we tell them about Jesus we share with them uh, our communication, and they are so happy. So that uh, uh, service uh, in the first adventure where we have special service to start the school year. Yeah, that's the skill. No, no, this is it. Children have gone through your school 
have been children? From the beginning to now. Oh, from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. We had um, to start when I, because uh, when I come from the seminary, I yeah. went to Port of Prince, and from Port of Prince, I moved to Cavation. To start, we start with about 75 kids. What year? It was uh, 2000, uh, so then 2000. Uh, when I moved to Cavation, 2005. Okay. 2005. And so to from how 2005 much is to 2024, uh, it's from 75 to 650. Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Do you also feed the children every day at school? Yes. We have one, all our schools mm -hmm. are fed. There's uh, an organization which bear the name of Trinity Book. Has helped with the feeding program, and we have a, a church from Kenton, uh, Holy Cross from Kenton, provide meal for the middle school in the church. But we have one school in the countryside that doesn't have feeding program. This is the country. So you're not only feeding them the word; you're also feeding their bodies, which, given the, given the situation in the country, that's a very critical thing. Yeah, thank you. And that's what we did, because uh, there's a saying that empty bed doesn't have ease. Yeah. So if you are teaching someone whose stomach is empty, you will not be, and is not in a situation to, to learn. So we think that it is important that we teach them about Jesus, we feed them for their body, and we also educate them. That I would mm -hmm. uh, When I was there, I mean, it was just a lot of the kids, that's the only meal they will have. And I can tell you, many kids, uh, many parents uh, send kids to our school. Yeah. Right. For one of the main reasons is because our education is good. But I will be saying that the main reason is that it's yeah. feed them. <laughs> For many of them, yeah. The food that you have, they have at school is the food they have for all day. So that's something important. I should say, uh, and they're going to be a witness till Tuesday morning at my house. If anybody wants to talk to uh, Pastor Bernard, give me a call if you want to talk to him later in the day or tomorrow. I'll leave it to Tuesday morning. And Linda over here, Linda actually owns a pharmacy. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> And so it's quite busy. And Brian just graduated from Akron University. So he's been well here done. a while. And he's in uh, cybersecurity. And he's been trying to make connections with people around here because he's looking for a job. So he's been talking to a lot. So he's been talking to a number of people he last night and today. And if you got anything for him, uh, can, you give me a call and we can talk to him. And uh, Theo is still in high school. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 Easy to be high. Easy to be high. Especially yeah. with languages. So, uh, once again, I want to extend my thankfulness to every one of you, my friends. Again, to my father and brother. Uh, and to my dear brother and colleague, <laughs> it's really a pleasure for me, Pastor, to meet you. And on behalf, of my family, on behalf of all the people that are serving in Haiti, I express my deep thankfulness to you for the support. May God bless you, my friends. We normally uh, close class with Lord's Prayer, so we will ask the Lord's Prayer together. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 